and I'm going to uh, go over this in, in a bit of a presentation mode, but then also uh, do some demo where I'm editing in, in the browser, um, mainly because uh, the GitHub Actions workflow syntax can be fairly dense. So I kind of simplified a little bit so I can talk about it um, at a high level. Um, and then uh, also, uh, Yoan is on as well. I don't know if you want to introduce yourself, Yoan. Sure. I'm Yoan. Uh, I work um, at GitHub with Tommy, and we're both on the Pages team. Yep. I'm just here for support. If there's any questions coming through the chat or anything, uh, send them here. I'll redirect them and we'll be happy to answer them. Cool. Um, so yeah, we're talking about GitHub pages and actions, um, deploying in seconds. And I have a bit of a spoiler. I'm just going to show you kind of, uh, I got I baked a cake already. Oh, there's a link to this. I need to delete that. Um, and then I'm going to just add our little B. Was it humble the B, I think? Um, and then I'm editing this in github.dev. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, humble the B. Yeah. New uh, Hugo Conf uh, mascot. Uh, so I'm going to add that to our website. Um, so, and I'm in the github.dev here, which is our web based editor. Um, one of the things that's really nice about that is uh, you don't even have to push anything since it's online. I can just say um, hello, Hugo Conf, in the commit message. Um, and then basically you're, you're done. Um, so that's going to commit. And if I come over to my repo uh, and go to the actions, you can see that that commit message I just wrote is already running the workflow. Um, and I'll go into the details a little bit, but you'll see that like the build and deploy, but because it's Hugo and it's all based on Go. Um, and not only is Hugo based on Go, but our new infrastructure that's deploying this and actions itself, a lot of the infrastructure behind uh, what's happening right now is actually written in Go. Um, and that build and deploy should happen. Uh, and it's already done. So uh, it looks like it total took about six, uh, 16 seconds. If I go back, you can see that it gives me the, the URL. And if I refresh, there you go. Um, so my page has now been updated with that. So again, all that happened in about 16 seconds. Let's talk about what's, what just happened. Um, and I'll go over kind of um, uh, some, of the, some of the things that we've changed, because uh, I've heard a lot, I've been a lot listening to the talks and the workshops, and I know a lot of people already use GitHub pages. Um, and the way you use GitHub pages today is probably uh, the old way, um, which uh, we're, we're launching a new feature. We were hoping to have it launched um, by the time this conference was here, but it'll launch probably at the end of next week or uh, maybe a week, week and a half or so. Um, but I'm gonna show you how it works today um, and give you a little bit of background about uh, what we changed. Um, in addition to the, that specific part, um, I'll go over a little bit about how, if you haven't used Actions, I'll give you a, like kind of a quick overview of uh, what Actions is and a little bit of the syntax and how it relates to pages. Uh, and then I'm going to go into the background of how people are using Hugo today to deploy to GitHub pages, because um, it does work, um, as people have already been talking about. Uh, but then I'll talk about the new features we're, we're uh, working on um, to basically le level the playing field for any static site generator, right? So not, and I'm, I want to be clear here, we're not saying we're getting rid of Jekyll. In fact, Jekyll has kind of evolved beyond um, just kind of being for pages. Um, and we're, we're are actually beefing things up so that you can use Jekyll 4 or your own plugins and that kind of thing as well. Um, so if you haven't used pages, let me just set, set the you know, kind of ground of what GitHub pages is. Um, so GitHub Pages was actually launched alongside Jekyll in 2008, um, and around November, December 2008. There's a blog post you can go read it. It's on our blog. Um, but basically, the, the idea was I want to push content to my repository and do nothing else, right? I just want to push the content to my repository and have that uh, that content be published on the internet. Um, and so what, what was invented at the time by some of the co-founders of GitHub um, was Jekyll to kind of help with this process and. GitHub being based uh, Ruby on Rails, obviously Jekyll was written in Ruby, but as has been mentioned, Jekyll, um, getting that whole kind of uh, environment set up is relatively complicated. Um, so we basically use Jekyll under the hood to power the build process. Um, and uh, you know, later on, we can introduce a feature. You can see I have a little footnote there that like you could add a file called .no Jekyll, which will come in later, which basically tells us, hey, I've, I've already built the page somewhere else. Uh, or maybe I'm just have static HTML um, and I want to just publish that without kind of Jekyll getting in the way. Um, so we enabled enable that feature almost a year later. It was like not even that, that long afterwards um, where we said, okay, if you don't want Jekyll, we can do that. Um, and the way that works today is you basically uh, set up GitHub pages to uh, have a branch that uh, pages will deploy from. Um, and 
so you, when you go to enable pages, um, you, you basically select either your main branch or a lot of people um, will use the gh-pages branch, kind of have a special branch that, that is for storing the content. Um, or you could also select, uh, you can see at the bottom right there, you can select a, a docs folder. So if you wanted the, your pages content to be uh, not in the root, but in the docs folder, you could do that as well. Um, but probably the more important thing and uh, from, from my, my perspective, what I've been working on with GitHub Pages is the infrastructure behind it. Um, so uh, if you're not aware, aware um, GitHub actually doesn't use a, a cloud. I mean, we obviously we're owned by Microsoft, so there's a manager involved uh, these days. Um, but we, uh, we've had, we have our own kind of physical data centers um, and there's a blog post there, which we, you can find the link where you just uh, Google GitHub's Metal Cloud, um, and you'll see the, the blog post where it talks about our physical data centers. So GitHub Pages is actually deployed in three separate physical data centers, um, and every deployment, so every time you push, uh, we, we actually create five different replicas of that Pages site uh, for redundancy. Uh, and then up in front of that, our origin servers um, so that it, it are, are deployed um, relatively globally, it's about 12, uh, 12 regions, maybe 13 by now. Um, we're, we're adding on to that um, as we go. Uh, those regions are where we announce the actual GitHub Pages origin, uh, which also now includes IPv6 support. Um, and then in front of all that, um, the, the custom domains that have certificates um, and then a global CDN powered by Fastly uh, is kind of sits in front of it. So what you see is like username.github.io, or if you have a custom domain name, um, that's actually pointed directly at uh, Fastly CDN, and then we kind of uh, route it on, on the back end. Um, so as I said before, you've got, you know, we're kind of based on Jekyll, but this is Hugo Comp. I want to use Hugo. Um, so this is where GitHub Actions uh, kind of comes into, into the thing. And, and people have been using Hugo and, and, GitHub, and GitHub Pages before Actions. Um, the general idea is like you want to, again, build your site somewhere else, um, but we, we we saw the need for you know not just pages but all kinds of other use cases for kind of building uh, content from your repository. So we invented uh, GitHub Actions, um, and people a lot of people actually some of the more popular use cases for GitHub Actions is actually deploying to pages without using Jekyll. So um, we'll go over a, again a brief overview. Get, GitHub Actions syntax is relatively dense. Um, but I want to kind of give you a general overview of what how it relates to um, to what you might do for a GitHub Pages site. Um, so at the top here uh, is the you know the first thing you'll usually see is on, and this is basically just saying what event do I want this job to run on. So in this case, in the example here, I'm saying on push to the main branch, or if a pull request is open that targets the main branch, um, I'm going to run the steps um, below here, uh, and there's a whole bunch of different events that you can uh, listen on, including issues and issue comments and things like that. Um, but these are kind of your, your, your typical, um, what you, if you're going to commit something and run a job, uh, whenever that commit happens, this is what you'll see. Um, so, and then an the example in the job here, so I just have kind of a demo here of just called Hugo, Hugo Build, so that's the job name. Um, I have this running on Ubuntu. Uh, we do have Mac and uh, Windows runners, and I did experiment with this last night. Hugo does work in Windows um, on the Windows runner. Um, I spun up a, a Windows VM, and, and the Hugo, it just have to make sure you download the right Hugo binary for Windows, and it works just fine as well. Um, and then you'll usually see the first step. So that the steps here are going to be, um, you know, in individual uh, actions you want you want to take, and maybe those individual actions require different dependencies, or are you know you need to complete before one another. Um, the first one usually being actions checkout. If you want to take any action um, on the contents of the repository, you'll use this actions checkout uh, action, uh, which is a bit redundant there, but you use the actions checkout um, to get a copy of the repository in that uh, actions runner. Um, and then from there, you'll take whatever steps you want to against that repository. So in this case, I'm, 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 I'm a little bit simplifying. I didn't show this. I'll show it later, but basically, you get the Hugo binary um, on your actions runner. You can just run Hugo just like you would locally, um, and it will, um, you know, run that command on that Ubuntu runner. So, uh, oh, and there's a there's a YouTube link down there at the bottom if you want to go watch it. There's a demo of kind of uh, that goes into some of the details of of this as well. Um, so, people are using GitHub Actions to deploy to pages today. One of the more popular ones is the user called P Cyrus, which we've actually. Um, Worked pretty closely with. Closely with. There's an interview with P. Cyrus uh, on our blog. Um, 
where basically they uh, worked on a, a way to deploy to GitHub pages um, from Actions. Uh, and they have this action that you can download um, or you can use uh, right now. It's public. All, all actions are public. Um, it's just called Actions GH Pages. Uh, and you basically just give it the, the output directory, which for Hugo, de the default is public. Um, what's going to happen when this when this runs is um, it actually commits the content um, to your GH Pages branch or whatever branch you have set up as your, your pages source. Uh, again, going back to this screen, whatever I set as the source right here, if I use this action, it will commit the content to that branch um, and that will publish the GitHub Pages site. Um, but there's a few problems with that, which we're, we're going to be talking about how we solve that. Um, one of which is what I mentioned earlier is, is what it does is it basically does the build and then adds some files um, into that into that commit, um, like the .no Jekyll file to tell GitHub, hey, we, we've already built this site. We don't want Jekyll involved. Um, the other thing it adds is the CNAME file, which you, if you have a custom domain name, um, maybe aware that like, you have to have that CNAME file in that specific source. Um, so that the custom domain uh, stays the same. Um, and then a lot of them will, uh, there's more than just these hours, but uh, what they typically do is they have kind of their own commit message um, that's separate, but then they link it back to um, the commit that generated that build. Um, and this works for any static site generator. Um, you can use that action GH pages, do your build process, and then commit it back to the branch that works. Um, the other problem this creates though, is you end up having Two separate branches. So this is like my default branch, which has my website in it and uh, the workflow. So that's my source content. But then you end up with a separate branch that is completely different. Ha has the, the the tree structure is is separate. The commits are different. And there's no relationship other than like we we do uh, have this like link here that will autom automatically linkify. You'll see that like it links to 51e4d08. If I go back over to the default branch, that's the commit that generated that build. Um, the other thing that's a little bit a little bit confusing is uh, last year in December we we basically replaced the old legacy uh, build infrastructure uh, to basically run actions for you to to, to do the deployment. Um, so now what this creates is a little bit of a confusing situation where I've got two workflows. One of them is the workflow I wrote that's doing Hugo, and then the second one is this workflow that we kick off for you. You can see that this workflow is it kicked off by the GitHub Pages bot. Um, and this workflow, um, it takes care of taking that co content from your, your branch and then deploying it over to, um, to our infrastructure. So, um, and again, this works, um, but it is a little bit confusing because I've now got basically two workflows, uh, one that I control and one that I don't. But the, the reason we did it this way is we had to build the infrastructure to get the content from actions um, on, uh, into uh, you know, that global distribution. So. Um, I'm going to go in a little bit of detail about how that's working, um, and then we'll talk about how, how you can use this yourself. Um, so one thing you may not be familiar with, um, unless you've kind of dove into actions deeply, is there is a, 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 a concept in GitHub Actions called uh, uh, artifact store. Um, so within GitHub Actions, you can you know, have a build and then generate an artifact, uh, and then that, that artifact can be shared uh, to, between multiple jobs inside that um, in, inside that same workflow. Um, so we're using this feature uh, and we, we built a, a custom action called upload pages artifact that kind of automatically does that work for you where you give it the directory. So just like uh, you saw earlier, I can give it a path of public, which is the content of my of my build. Um, and I wanna upload that artifact um, to some storage layer that we're gonna allow, uh, that we know how to, how to work with. Um, the other thing this does is it get, still gives you the contents of the build um, in the web UI. So I'll, I'll show you this in a little bit more detail, but basically you get a, a, a little box at the bottom of the summary of the actions workflow where you can actually see the artifact and download it and view the contents. Um, so that kind of replaces the like need to push it to the branch so you can see the build output. Um, you'll see that the build output just by having the artifact right there in the browser. Uh, the other thing is this does is that artifact um, can have a custom retention policy. So you could download the artifact through the REST API uh, if you want to look at it, uh, or you could say, I, you know, I don't really care about the artifact. It'll default to a retention policy of, of like one day. Um, and then after a day, that artifact is gone. So it's not taking up any, any space anywhere. 
Um, the other thing that we do is once the artifact is stored, um, we're actually deploying the, that artifact to a GitHub Pages environment. So in, instead of deploying it to the branch, um, you may have seen the GitHub Pages environment um, in, in your repository if you've used if you've used this. Um, that environment still exists, but we use Actions. Uh, Actions actually has native hooks into our environment uh, um, kind of specification. Um, so basically, you can say in the job, I want to deploy to an environment named GitHub Pages. Um, and then that's also can, you know, run on Ubuntu latest if you want. Uh, then the important thing here is, is we say it needs the build step. So this basically makes sure that if I've got a step that's generating the artifacts in the deploy step, I'm going to say I, I need the build step to complete properly. Um, and then if that, if that build step completed properly, I'm going to take a step to deploy pages. And we basically wrote this action to uh, understand what's happening and it'll automatically take the artifact generated by um, the previous step and then deploy that to our environment. Um, it does create an artifact in your workspace called github-pages.tar. Um, and we, we do this because there's some security implications around how the, that artifact is get generated. It's, it's basically a packaging step um, where we take that public directory and, and do some security stuff around like how, we, how we're packaging the artifact so that we can serve it properly. Um, and then we'll deploy it for you automatically. So um, the other thing that's really a, a huge benefit of doing this natively in Actions is uh, GitHub token permissions. So uh, basically with inside Actions, um, there every time an action gets generated, uh, you can choose to write a token um, to the workflow that has permissions that are related to that workflow. So this is if you've used personal access tokens in, uh, on GitHub before, it's a similar concept, but GitHub, the GitHub token in Actions is actually scoped to that specific workflow. Um, the other thing we did is we added um, more kind of unique permissions um, that, are, that are specific to Actions um, that basically that token uh, will only be valid for the, the, uh, the, like the, the duration of that workflow run, and then it's, it's thrown out. And then you can give it very specific permissions. Um, so the nice thing here, what this means is only during the job where I'm requiring uh, deploying to pages, do I need to give that job pages right? Um, the other thing you'll see here, you may not have seen before, is a, a permission called ID token right. Um, and this is basically a way to, to create an encrypted uh, piece of metadata uh, that can also get stored with the workflow. Uh, it's a JWT token uh, with some claims about it that are specific to that um, that workflow run. So it, it, it will contain metadata about the environment we're trying to deploy to, um, who requested the, the deployment, whether it was requested through a push or some other some other event. Um, so all that data uh, is, is written to the action um, in that ID token and it's encrypted so that when that tag token is passed back to us to request the deployment, we can verify um, uh, you know, the, the, that token is, basically that, that workflow is allowed to request the deployment. Um, where this comes in really, really nicely is in a public repository with forks. Um, you know, if somebody forks your repository, you can ensure that um, the job that is doing the build, maybe you want that a fork to be able to, you know, do a build, but because that's a fork, you don't want that fork to be able to deploy to your GitHub Pages site. And this basically enforces that, right? Where basically, where inside the job that's doing the build, you can have that run even on a fork. Uh, and then you as the admin or somebody with uh, right access to the repository can then request a deployment as a separate step. So, uh, and again, yeah, there's a blog post that got, kind of goes into more details about that. So this is all great, but what if we could just add Hugo to those steps um, and, and kind of do it all in one? Well, it turns out uh, you can. Um, you can basically just add whatever steps you want here um, before uploading the artifact. Um, and that can be just a Hugo, you know, a Hugo uh, CLI that's, you know, with a base URL, um, or there's been a lot of interesting uh, talks here uh, that one, one that I was really super fascinated with that Cloud Cannon in hand is, uh, was the uh, page write or page search or something, um, which, you know, allows you to kind of index the content after the build is done. So you could do that even before the uploading the artifact. Um, so whatever steps you want to take to process the content uh, it can all happen, and then all we really care about from the pages perspective is what is what's the directory you want us to uh, want us to deploy, and we'll take it from there, right? Uh, and this does work. You can actually do this today. 
Um, but uh, there's still a little bit of a tech debt, which we'll, we'll talk about how we're changing that here in a minute. Um, but basically, you still have to give it a source branch um, to effectively turn on GitHub pages. Um, but that source branch doesn't need to have any kind of relationship other than uh, you know, it needs to be enabled for, for the pages environment to get created. Um, and but you don't actually have to have any content in that um, in that branch whatsoever. Um, if you enable it and then set up some other um, uh, uh, configurations and set up the workflow yourself, um, it can actually work. And some people have already seen this. Like uh, they looked, they saw the dynamic workflow that we were generating, realized that they could just do that all in actions um, and uh, and get it working. So. Uh, so I've got a little link here. Um, basically, if you want to go to this uh, uh, and, and, and go through the, the demo, um, this will take you to um, uh, some documentation. A lot of it is just stuff I've already talked through uh, here in, in the presentation. Um, and then there's also this repo template, um, which is linked here. Um, so I set this up for this, um, for this um, Hugo Conf. Uh, and this is literally just the, the quick start guide. So I followed the quick start guide here, uh, generated a basic site um, with a single post in it. Um, and you can use this as a template to clone it into your own um, in your own user account. Um, if you haven't used templates before, they're similar in concept to a fork, except that it's, it doesn't keep the relationship to the original repository. Um, so there's no expectation when you use a template that like you're going to fork it and, and open a pull request against it. Um, but when I use this, it'll ask me to what username and what name do I want to give that, that template. Um, I can make it public or private. I can choose any of the branches um, and I can create that. And it'll actually uh, generate the repository. So I'm now generating a new one called uh, Glowing Engine from that template. It'll take it a few seconds. That's now in my user account. And then uh, what we're introducing um, next week, we were hoping to have it done this week, but it'll be next week. Um, is basically a way to get rid of that need for the source branch. Um, it seems kind of simple on, on, on the surface, but there's a lot of work involved here to kind of get rid of the dependency on that source branch. Um, but that's what we're working on. And basically what happens is, so again, I, I cloned that, I, uh, that template into my user account. Notice there's no workflows here yet. I did this on purpose. There's no workflows in the, in the template. Because what we want you to experience is going to pages. All you have to do is set actions and we actually detect that this is a Hugo um, repository based on the structure of the, of the content. Um, and then you click configure here and we'll take you to uh, GitHub Actions. Um, we've got some starter workflows. You can review this and change it if you want, um, but by default, it's got everything set up to deploy. Um, you could rename this to um, deploy, uh, let's just say during Hugo. Oh. Uh, and you can see that it has a lot of the same uh, things that I was just discussing in the presentation. Um, so there's the permissions um, for the GitHub token where it has pages right. Uh, concurrency is a nice one because uh, it allows you to like, it, you know, if you've got multiple people contributing um, to, the re to the repository um, and maybe, you know, they contribute, maybe somebody uh, opens the pull request, merges it, and then somebody else comes in right after them. What this enables is basically uh, the cancel in progress says if there's another build in progress um, when I get this event, um, so if somebody else pushes, it will actually cancel the previous build um, so that you don't kind of have overriding um, builds. So that, that you end up in a race condition where like one build completes and then maybe for some reason the other build took longer. Uh, the first one, maybe the first build took longer and then it completes after the second one. So you want to kind of have this concurrency uh, control here. Uh, the other thing we do is just default the, uh, the shell for all the runners to bash. Uh, and then these are the jobs um, that uh, we give you by default. And again, it runs on Ubuntu latest. Um, I'm actually behind on our starter workflow. I realize there's a new version of Hugo. But basically, you can just set the environment variable um, for whatever version of Hugo you want. Um, and what we do is basically just download the binary. Um, so this, this binary comes from GitHub. Um, so the download takes literally like less than a second. Um, it's like, because it's actually coming from Fastly into our runner. Um, and we basically just download that, uh, run sudo dpackage to install it. And now the Hugo binary, well, notice that's the first step I'm taking. Now that Hugo binary is available to me on the runner and I can do whatever I want with that version of Hugo. And all you have to do to upgrade is just change whatever the version number is. 
um, and then we will basically download the extended uh, the extended binary that they recommend um, for that package. Again, if you were changing this to, let's say you want to change this to Windows latest, um, I don't know off the top of my head what the file name is, but you know, there's probably Hugo version Windows. Um, so you'd have to change whatever version of the binary you had there. So I want to back out of that because I don't want to create a failed build. Um, and then the rest of it is basically the, the same thing we just talked about, um, where we check out the repository, we run the build, we upload the artifact, uh, and then we run deploy, um, and that will, it will take care of it from there. So uh, the other thing I kind of skipped over is we have this second step in the middle here, which we uh, are experimenting with called configure pages. Um, what this does is if you used uh, pages, you know, like there's kind of different types of, of, of pages sites. One's your user page, which is, you know, user.github.io. And if you have a project page like this one um, called Glowing Engine, that path is actually going to be important to how your pages site routes. So what we do in configure pages um, is we're actually calling out to the GitHub API and asking GitHub, hey, where, what URL are you going to route this pages site on? Um, so by doing this, we have this ID called pages. And then when we call Hugo, we actually pass so that ID relates to this ID here. In, in the step called pages, we take the output that this generates called base URL and pass that to Hugo um, so that basically we, there's no guessing, there's no having to go configure your config.toml. We just run the Hugo CLI with that variable um, and it will automatically generate all the content um, based on that, uh, that base. I know there's, there's some situations where that may not exactly work. Um, this is why we're kind of experimenting with this, um, but that's uh, in my experiments, it, it's worked worked out fairly well. Um, so yeah, again, uh, this was a starter workflow generated for me. If I hit commit, I'm going to go ahead and commit this to my default branch. Um, and because it's set up to run uh, on uh, the event of committing to a default branch, you should see the commit message that it created um, called create pages.yaml. Um, that build will happen. Um, and you can see that similar to the last one, the build's running, but in, in this one, uh, I have the job set up in two separate, uh, uh, I have the workflow set up in two, two separate jobs. Again, the build, because it's Hugo, literally took six seconds. Uh, that's actually the longest I've seen it take to install the Hugo CLI. Most of the time, it's been like a second or less. Um, this one, for some whatever reason, took two seconds. Um, but then the checkout takes a second. and then But then the build, of course, this is a very basic website. Uh, with only a single post, so it's not fairly complex, but the build only took 107 milliseconds um, to generate it, and then we upload and deploy. And you can see in the time that it took me to explain to you what just happened, uh, that deploy is finished, and I can go to this page, and there's the same, you know, Hugo you know, website, uh, which looks the same as the other one, um, but it is different because um, it's on that tcbird.dev slash glowing engine. Um, so it's a different website, just happens to be the same because it's the same template, the same uh, repos template repository that, that generated it. So, um, yeah, and uh, the other thing that to, to, to understand here about, oh yeah, and there's the artifact. Um, so when that build happened, the artifact that got generated here, so we upload the artifact. Um, you can see, if, if you want to review this, you can see all the content that was generated um, and that, that goes into that artifact, but then from here, you can actually download this. Uh, and I'm not sharing my whole desktop, so you may not see, but basically it downloads a zip file that includes all that content. So you can inspect that um, if you want, or if you don't want it anymore, you can delete the artifact. Um, once, it's, once it's deployed, we don't need that artifact anymore. Um, yeah, uh, the other reason you might want to do two separate steps is, uh, again, remember how I talked about deploying, um, you're actually deploying to uh, the GitHub pages environment. So if I go over here to my repository, you'll see that there's an environment on the bottom right called GitHub Pages. Um, so this is where we're deploying to. Um, and if you, it's, it's all kind of interlinked. If I click on the deployment, it'll take me back to that workflow run. Um, the reason for doing it as a separate job is uh, there's another um, feature of environments. Um, it's not enabled on this repo. Um, we're actually gonna work on that as well. Um, but if I go to one of my public repositories, um, inside, oh wait, that's private as well. Sorry. Yeah, so this one's public. Um, inside 
uh, environment. Um, so you'll have a GitHub Pages environment uh, that has protection rules. Um, so the reason we, you might want to separate the two is uh, in my deployment, I might want to say I want specific reviewers to be included when I'm deploying that GitHub Pages environment, or I want a timer. Let's say, let's say if the build could happen, but maybe I want to wait 15 minutes um, you know, for somebody to sign off on it. Um, or just wait for, you know, so you don't have the content being uh, updated every 50, every every time there's a build, right? Uh, so these are all kind of customizable. The other important thing is you can select which branches are allowed to deploy. Um, so you get, so in this example, um, we actually set this up by default where only the, the main branch in this repository is allowed to deploy to this environment. So if I try to set up a workflow to deploy from a different branch, uh, it would actually fail. It would say like, you know, the build would still happen, but the deployment would stop um, because it wasn't, a, that branch wasn't allowed to deploy um, to this. Um, or I could add additional branches. Um, I can, so there, there's that map main branch and I could add one, let's say, let's say maybe I wanted any branch name prod um, to, to apply. Um, so now any branch name that would be allowed to deploy um, to the, the GitHub pages environment. Um, so yeah, this is that's the feature we're talking we're talking about announcing uh, in the next week or so. Um, again, you can go use that today by using this this kind of trick. Um, but um, yeah, uh, this is uh, going to be a pretty pretty amazing feature, uh, I think, because it's going to change so that any static set generator is on the same uh, playground as as any any other uh, as Jekyll was in the past. So. Um, let's see, was there other things I wanted to cover? I think I, I, think I covered it all. Uh, again, I, I did mention that there's this um, uh, discussion where you can, uh, so all the documentation is in here. Um, you can go through that template and, and set it all up and then leave any feedback you want. Um, this is public, you're free to, if you have a GitHub account, uh, ask questions in here. We'll be monitoring this over the next week or so um, and can you know uh, take feedback and answer questions inside there. So. Um, yeah, so I think that's all. Uh, there, there's other things I can cover, but I wanted to leave some time. We've got about 10 minutes left for Q&A. So. Yeah, thanks, Tommy. It's a really exciting feature. And um, yeah, I think it's going to streamline a lot of those other ECSG deployment. I know um, a lot of people stuck on with Jekyll 3 on GitHub yep. pages, and that's going to, uh, I'm sure, <laughs> unlock a lot of upgrades um, with the GitHub yeah, actually, pages. Uh, yeah, I didn't even I didn't even show you. I kind of rushed over it, but I do have because this is you know not a Jekyll conference, but my main website is actually running a Jekyll four um, uh, build. So it's similar, right? Where instead of instead of downloading the Hugo CLI, I just do set up Ruby. So there's no like custom, you know, GitHub pages, Docker container, or anything. I literally just say, give me Ruby three, uh, and then do bundle exec Jekyll build, and by the gem file being there, it's going to do that um, mm. for you whatever version of Jekyll you have in your in your gem file. Yeah. So it's the same thing. We're kind of putting everything on the same playground where like now that we have actions and we have the process to deploy any artifact generated by any build, build process to pages, um, that can be Jekyll 3, it can be Jekyll 4, it can be Hugo, whatever you want, right? Yeah. No, I think that's huge, particularly for the, the Jekyll community. Yeah, really yeah. exciting. Um, what what a, um. I think there's like a lot of really interesting developments here and it, it's it's so, so streamlined um, from that work around that you, that there is at the moment. Uh, yeah. What are you excited about in the, the future roadmap for, for GitHub pages? Um, I mean, so there's a lot coming. Um, you know, we're, we, we have a, um, I don't know, Johan, do we want to talk about it? Not sure we can talk about too much of yeah. the features. Um, but I mean, if you look at what we are doing, like pages for a very long time, it predates actions. So everything happening in pages was custom built, custom made, everything custom. We are bridging the gap to bring pages into actions so we can leverage all the current and incoming features on action. So think about continuous integration, environment gates, anything, it's all coming together. Mm. Um, so it's we're not done yet. Um, yeah. Yeah. A lot. A lot of a lot of this work that we've been doing for the last I don't know year or, or more has been just kind of 
um, a little bit of just getting rid of the tech debt in a way of the old Jekyll process that's been around since mm -hmm. not that, that that specific process hasn't been around since 2008, but um, you know that old uh, process that was kind of custom bespoke builder that we had um, you know kind of had to lock down for security reasons, right? Like there were the only certain things that we could allow. Um, it is still great um, for people who don't know about Jekyll, don't know about Hugo. I just want some markdown content um, in my repository and want to turn that into a website. Um, and so one of the things we've been focused on the last, uh, you know, with, with, in addition to Hugo is also just making sure that that experience is still there, right? Mm -hmm. If I don't know anything about, uh, you know, I just learned about Git and GitHub. Um, I want to create a pages site. Um, how can I make sure that that's simple? So a lot of it just kind of gets it into, uh, this isn't work that our team on the pages side did, but the, the, that, that, the fact that we detect the repository is, is a Hugo repository um, is um, basically we're doing some uh, tech analysis. Um, so if you go to, um, go to like just without talking about pages at all, right? Um, if I go to actions um, and then say uh, new workflow, um, there's some suggestions that come up and this is powered by some uh, analysis we're doing on the repository. Um, and, you know, obviously, like other cloud providers can come in and, and suggest their own workflows. Uh, this is actually public. If you go to actions slash starter workflows, um, this is where a lot of that comes from. Um, and we're making our own for pages. So what I'm really interested to see uh, uh, happen, what I'd love to see happen is, you know, we're, we're going to develop some starter workflows for kind of what we, we've picked, like, kind of the top ones so Hugo obviously is one of the more popular one most popular actually I think even more than Hugo uh, than Jekyll and some oh, wow. uh, Interesting. and so what I'd love to see happen so we have this is like our staging environment um, so we have this pages folder and we've focused on this list so Hugo Gatsby uh, Next.js Next.js and then a static which is um, literally just I don't, don't want to build process I just have HTML that you know uh, I just want to push to, to kind of, because there are people that use like, they have like static JSON APIs where they just have JSON files in their repository and they want that on pages. Mm -hmm. um, so there is no build process. Um, they just want to put the content there and have it be uh, available. So you can do that using just static. But I'm interested to see where this goes um, with other sets, you know, site generators. People can, um, can contrib contribute to this repository. Um, and then we could, with additional detection logic, I was, I was, I've been really interested in Astro um, and like, could we make Astro work the same way, right? Um, so I'm, I'm interested to see where this, where this takes us because a lot of people have uh, contributed to uh, these kind of uh, this ecosystem of actions that deploy to the GH pages branch. Um, so I'm curious to see if those same contributors are pick up this and say, well, how about this new action that um, is my custom build process for whatever I, uh, whatever I invented, right? Um, to deploy to pages, so. Mm. I think um, this question might be answered with the screen right here, but uh, Liam's asking what SSGs will it will uh, support out of the box? Yeah, so that um, this is this is the list we're focusing on. Um, so what what this will look like is if I if you go to um, well I, I have to go through it, uh, the template again, but basically what this looks like is we do some analysis of the stack. So we'll look at. Does it have a next config file? Um, does it have a Nux config file? And then whatever that is, we'll we'll recommend. Um, but this is this is not necessarily a static list, right? I mean, um, again, like I said, like I mentioned, it doesn't like the the process that we're unlocking here is that the build process can happen, and then we just figure out how to deploy that artifact um, at that point, right? Um, so we'll have starter workflows for this list, but you could use whatever you want. Like I know that the maintainer of Zola has already been uh, interested in uh, talking about this. I think that's a Rust-based um, generator. So hmm. I don't know if there's a little reveal there, but you said this is not a static list. Does uh, <laughs> Next.js doesn't have uh, it has a static portion and it has a server-side rendered portion. Uh, are we going to see anything? around rendering dynamic content on GitHub pages? Uh, we're, we're definitely talking about it. Uh, there's nothing I can really talk about in any, any, any detail right now. But Got it. Um, what, what I will say is like, if you, if you look at um, uh, how fast the build happened, right? So like, if I go back to this action, 
you can see that this build happened in really less, like it says 30 seconds, but really like that, a lot of that is just setup time. So what we're talking about is like, how can we make, how can we get like shrink this down, right? What, what to where I don't have four seconds to set up the job. I don't mm -hmm. have to do all this, right? Um, you know, what can I, what can we do to kind of make this uh, a little bit more of a lightweight process? Because if like for, for security reasons, like th these are setting up entire virtual machines, right? Like it has to provision a virtual machine. And we have these, these like uh, pool of virtual machines. So it's not actually provisioning a brand new one every time. Um, but how can we kind of improve this? And there's some features if you go look in the GitHub Actions roadmap around premium runners and things like that. Mm. Um, but then like the server side rendering, um, basically like the infrastructure has to exist. Um, one of the challenges that we have from, with the metal cloud, right? Because it's, it's mm. our own physical data centers is we can't just like proxy to a Lambda function like Netlify and Cell and all those um, other tools we're, we're using, right? Yeah. Um, we, we have to basically build that ourselves or or you know, uh, figure out some other way to do dynamic rendering. So. Got it. Very interesting. What well, what do you um, what's the kind of breakdown of use cases for GitHub Pages? Like I imagine a lot of it's documentation on yeah. open source repos. What are the other common use cases you see there? Uh, so intranets. Um, so I, I'm a so I, I my first real web development job was doing SharePoint sites. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm seeing a lot of use cases for people who use GitHub pages for their internet, right? We actually use it internally for our internet. So we like in, internally GitHub, I won't show it to you here because there's who knows what you, what you see, but <laughs> our internet website, you know, for, uh, for um, news posts about, you know, what's going on with the company and their benefits and that kind of stuff. Uh, the internet, our internet site is hosted on GitHub pages. Um, so, and actually the whole search conversation that um, we had yesterday around the, the, I was super interested in that because that's a challenge that we're having with our internet is how to get server side, how to get search working with static websites. Um, yeah, so I, like th those are some uh, of the big use cases. Um, you know, GitHub Enterprise is our, is a big uh, uh, product for us, which is like kind of the self-hosted version of, of GitHub. Um, so basically getting those, those internal intranets and in internal documentation sites on, on pages is a big use case, so. Awesome. Um, yeah, I think we're almost out of time. Any kind of last words before we wrap up? Uh, no, that's it. I mean, again, I'm super excited to see uh, how this develops um, once we announce. I know, I know the kind of committing to a GH pages branch has been a, a bit of a, a hacky workaround that we've been dealing with for a while and it works great, um, but it is, it's been a bit confusing. So um, definitely feel free to uh, give us any feedback on that um, uh, on that discussion. Uh, this is, we're, we're, we're announcing it as a beta, so it's not, we're not considering it done. Um, but yeah, so feel free to kind of give us feedback and we'll we'll take that and, and, and improve things. Uh, and also all these actions will be public and open source. Um, so if you see a, a way to improve it, especially the Hugo one, uh, if there's a better way to do it, you know, I'm no Hugo expert. Um, if there's a better way to kind of get the build working or whatever you want there, or if there's other other samples you want to talk about, um, including um, definitely feel free to let us know. So. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today, guys. Um, really excited for the GitHub pages roadmap and um, what's coming soon. I think it's going to unlock a lot for the static site generator community. Yep. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm.